This is the most remote I've ever been in my van, and unexpected snowfall means that it's time to start getting out of here before it's too late, even if it had been quite the mission to get in here in the first place. Hi there, I'm Amanda, and this cutie is Frank. He's my best friend, co-pilot, and supervisor, but he's not much of a morning dog. Together, we have been living in a van full-time for almost 10 years now, exploring from the tideline to the alpine, trying to enjoy a quiet, peaceful life, and savoring the moment with gratitude for this beautiful and diverse world. After going through a rough patch in August, I decided that I needed a new adventure to get me out of my slump and back to feeling like myself again. So I decided to go somewhere I've never been before and spent a week cruising along a bumpy, unmaintained dirt road until I found myself here in the Northwest Territories, surrounded by mountains and very, very far from people. This place I found to call home for a couple days is nearly 250 kilometers of slow going road to the nearest community where you can get things such as fuel. There's also a ferry crossing at the start with very limited hours, which means that this road is cut off from the rest of the world 16 hours a day. No one lives out here, but there are a few small mining operations which the workers are mostly flown into and several very rustic hunter's cabins. When I drove the Dempster Highway up to the Arctic Ocean, I thought that felt pretty remote, but once I got out here, I quickly realized that this was indeed far more remote than anywhere along the Dempster, with way less people and absolutely zero services. Because of the isolation, I felt so at ease out here alone with Frank soaking in the autumn colors, enjoying a spectacular aurora display, and savoring cozy rainy days in the van. As much as I absolutely didn't want to leave this place, I had assessed the situation and come to the conclusion that it wouldn't be possible for us to survive winter. So when the rain turned to snow, I decided it was probably best to leave before any serious amount of snow came down head to lower elevation, and start making my way back towards civilization, even if slowly, as I tend to do things. But before I departed, I found a mountain spring with fresh water and set it up to filter while I went for a wander to enjoy my first dusting of snow for the year and embed this beautiful landscape in my memory. With chores done, it was time to say farewell to this lovely place and hit the road in search of our next location to hang out for a little while as I reluctantly made my way back to busier places.
I hadn't gone too far, even though I had driven for over an hour, but I did make it back to the Yukon and felt satisfied enough by the drop in elevation to call an end to the day's driving so that I could enjoy being in such a beautiful location. Finally seeing fresh snow in the mountains was such a delightful sight, and knowing that sunny days will now be fewer and further between, I wanted to savor being outside with Frank, soaking in the autumn after having just experienced a couple rainy days. I've always been a slow traveler, but as the years pass by, I've tended to take life even slower. And I've learned how to enjoy bad weather, living in such a tiny space, rather than always running around trying to avoid it, which has made days like this that much more enjoyable. Do you want your jacket, Frank?
There you go, bud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, bud. Yeah, I know I'm gonna make lunch. There you go, you can have that. My goodness, that was a hole right through the bridge. Yikes.
It is a pretty dark and chilly day, so I'm going to just enjoy some tea and continue working on this book and just relax for a while and then probably do a bit of work online and um, maybe watch a movie. We're just going to have like a real cozy inside night. And if you're wondering why I haven't talked to you directly during this video, it's because when I did the uh, live stream about a week ago, I damaged my throat and my voice box got really swollen and painful. And so I've had to not talk <laughs> since or it just makes things a lot worse. So I was singing a bit while driving today and I can feel it's like so much tighter feeling. Kind of feels like being strangled but thankfully it's not like a sore throat when I'm sick so I can swallow without pain. I think I just damaged my voice from overusing it uh, with the live stream. But yeah in normal day-to-day -day life I talk to Frank a little bit and then except when I'm seeing friends the majority of talking I do is to you through the camera so I did hang out with some friends about like one to two weeks before I did the live stream and noticed that it was making my voice a little sore but then the live stream was just way too much talking so I've been on voice rest ever since so with that said I'm going to enjoy my cozy night in silence and yeah, we'll see what we get up to tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't end up getting up to anything. It rained and I had a glorious day inside with Frank just puttering and being cozy. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching and watching all the way through. I really appreciate you. A huge thank you to patrons. And I got a cute clip of Frank to send you off on your way. So I'll see you soon.